Hello. Well, penetrating the Einstein Big Bang bullshit folks hasn't been nearly as difficult as communicating the good news to the masses, uh, the public, excuse me. I thought my prior videos were plenty good, but I'm not getting any feedback. I'm going to have to take responsibility for not making this new and somewhat tricky, although terribly important concept. Clear enough, the cosmic expansion model of issue here and the cause of gravity is not my idea. It isn't a hypothesis or a theory. It's an amalgamation of pure mathematically sound and well-established scientific facts which expose the Einstein relativity Big Bang fraud in the harsh light of truth. It's not that difficult to understand. So I've worked on some improved animation effects and a smoother delivery. And I desperately hope this presentation will convey a better understanding for those of you with a hunger for the truth. The proven cause of gravity and matching expansion model herein finishes history's most important achievement in science and mathematics by the most excellent and celebrated Sir Isaac Newton over 300 years ago, and therefore establish this cosmic model as the finest and most complete scientific discovery of all time. It's a culmination of great beauty that the entire world should appreciate and understand. Taking no credit for myself, understand. It shouldn't be about me. I just happen to be able to solve this kind of problem. So I want to start with the pound Revke experiment once again, which nicely exposes the fraudulent claims of being a validation of Einstein's relativity, which it clearly never was. This is a fact easily seen by the average person you, so pay attention, please. Because right now, the most important understanding in science of all time rests with my ability to communicate this to others, otherwise it will die with me. So this is the same picture for every single claim ever made that purported to validate Einstein. It's all a glossy veneer of media hype and government propaganda. And the results of the pound Rebka experiment also very nicely lay the factual foundation for the cosmic expansion model by Alfus, DBA Fus research. And all of these things are going to be explained to you perfectly. Just be patient. So if you like, you can go to the wiki article on the internet, um, look up wiki pound Revka, and you can see exactly what it is that I'm showing you here in this illustration. And the point of the experiment, of course, was to prove that clock speeds will diminish as gravitational potential diminishes over a period of the distance of two elevations, which we call the distance h. And so over the distance H, we can expect a higher frequency, a shift towards the blue, and also a change in clock speed. And what the article or the experiment was supposed to do here is they start out explaining is validate Einstein. So after a little while, we come up with this formula, uh, frequency of the receiver is equal to frequency of the emitter times the fractional difference between the two. And you can see immediately that hardly anybody could or would attempt to understand this equation. It's just complete nonsense, complete bullshit. Uh, first of all, this value of G, they don't declare the variables. 
That's not the way you set up the problem. That's not the way I did it thousands and thousands of times. You have to declare your variables and list the knowns at the top of your problem. Anyway, G, that we have to assume is Newton's gravitational constant. Uh, it would be claimed to be Einstein's cosmological constant because he's just nothing but a plagiarist ripoff. But at, at any rate, G is supposed to describe the force of attraction between two bodies of mass. Well, we see one body of mass, which we assume must be the Earth. Do you see another body of mass? No. The equation is, is completely meaningless. You do see the distance h, but then they throw the equation out because they say the distance h is negligible in this formula. Well, that was the whole point of the experiment to prove Einstein over the distance h, wasn't it? So we're going to throw his formula out and you're going to flush it down the toilet? Yeah, that's what they do. So I checked the units and they do cancel out properly, but I didn't bother to check the actual number that they arrive at. <clears throat> Maybe it works. I rather doubt it because just like Lewis Essen said, um, all of Einstein's stuff is just pure air. It's pure hoax. It's meaningless. It's meant to impress you. So then they move to the next expression, which has nothing to do with clock speed, but this is where they stop. And that is that the instantaneous rate in or change in energy over the distance h is equal to g, the acceleration of gravity, times h over c squared. We're back to Newton. This is a variation of Newton's potential energy equation, that's all that it is. What happened to clock speed? See, they never get that far because they don't want you to think too much. They want to divert your attention to this change in energy, which is supposedly Einstein's real prediction. Of course, as the frequency increases and shifts towards the blue, there is greater, there is a gain in energy, but the kinetic energy of the light coming down towards the Earth over that distance decreases. The velocity of light decreases, and so the change in energy is actually large. So this is all just smoke and mirrors. However, there is something real underpinning the experiment, and that is the change in clock speed is real. So, and this isn't a, dif this isn't a differential equation, okay? This isn't... Um, an instantaneous, this is not, we try to make you think this is advanced calculus or something. This should be a capital delta. The overall difference, change in energy divided by the initial energy is equal to GH over C squared. And the number is right. This would actually be the Fractional change in clock speed over that distance. The clock speed will decrease. The wavelength will decrease by the same exact proportion. And guess what? Those two things define the distance of a meter. So a meter is shorter also as you come closer to the Earth. So forget about this nonsense about time dilation. This is what really they're referring to. It's just the fact that clocks run more slowly at lower elevations. But I just wanted to emphasize the hype here and the deception. And from here, we're going to go to my next illustration, which um, defines how clock speed, length, and frequency change throughout a gravitational potential. And this is very important. So let's go to that next illustration. So I declare this as Bruce's law of clock speed and dimensions. It's really not mine. It has nothing to do with me other than I'm trying to bring it to the world's attention. These are the facts that underpin the pound replica experiment. But you have to figure out, out for yourself without the experiment. The experiment most aptly demonstrates and confirms these relationships. And really all you need to know is the change in clock speed, because if the clock speed decreases, the frequency or the wavelength also decreases. And as a result, the length of the meter decreases. Literally, this is true. And going in the reverse, as you 
move farther away from the earth, this triad of variables, wavelength, length of a meter, clock speed, they all increase as well. So space is expanding as you get away from the earth. And this fixed dimension relationship between expanding space and fixed dimensions is critical to understand. So you all remember freshman physics. A meter is defined by so many wavelengths over a certain period of time, and that establishes what a meter is. So if you take a meter and you move it away from higher up in the gravitational potential where the force of gravity isn't so great, the meter grows. You could actually do this a million billion times and the laws of physics would still remain the same. It would still be a meter. It structurally would be exactly the same and it would look the same to you internally because the clock speed would be increasing and the wavelength would increase to match. And so the meter is still a meter, no matter where it is in the universe. And end to end, even though the meter stick may grow or shrink as you travel from one end of the universe to the other, it will still end up giving you the same value for the radius of the universe. On the outside, however, for a remote observer, a remote observer does see these changes, that there is a redshift in light as it leaves the Earth, and that the meter is getting longer. They don't make too much of that issue, but it's true. And so that's all we have to say about it. Now, these equations here that I've written down on this page, I wrote these down back in the 70s because I understood these things. This is just freshman level physics. And so I derived them from Newton's formula for potential energy which is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity over the distance h. And so you can <clears throat> come down here. I won't try to spend too much time explaining this, but you can go through this yourself and see that r sub one equals r sub naught. In other words, the final clock speed is equal to the initial clock speed minus the fractional change in clock speed, which would be the initial rate of clock speed times gh over c squared. Okay, this isn't difficult to derive. I'm going to let you do it. It's up to you. And there are different ways of describing that. Perhaps uh, this one here, capital delta R is equal to the initial rate of clock speed negative times the change in velocity divided by C. And of course, GH will give you your change in velocity. So actually it's a velocity issue. The change in velocity will change the rate of clock speed. And so this formula here is, well, we can say it again down here, but we can substitute L for length because the length will increase or decrease depending on how far away or close you are to the earth or what the difference in velocity is between two points. It's just a change in velocity. The change in, in that change in velocity, acceleration or deceleration or gravitational effect will change your clock speed, change the length, and also change the frequency. And one other thing that I, I didn't mention is that when light is leaving the Earth, it also increases in velocity. And the increase in velocity will give you the actual change in clock speed in other words, the change in light velocity is actually equal to the increase in wavelength or fractional increase in um, clock speed as well. So as you leave your, if you're a, a beam of light or a photon, you're going to accelerate away from the Earth. Your clock is going to start running faster. Your meter is going to start growing. But to you locally, it's all the same. You see no change whatsoever. That's very important to understand. Okay, so these facts I laid out, these actually comprise, they are the foundation of the cosmic expansion model. Not a theory, not a hypothesis, but a fact. These are all well-established physical facts.
Now, another way of looking at it is this illustration I've done of an entire universe. Instead of a just planet Earth, we're going to make it a, an entire universe. And what we want to point out is that if the universe as a whole expands in the cosmic sense, meaning that everything inside it expands as well, not just that the distance between raisins are increasing, which is what the physicists want to impress upon you, but that the raisins themselves are expanding and the space around them is expanding. Every point in space is expanding. And as it expands, the laws of physics remain the same internal. You would never know that you're expanding in that sense. We're talk not talking about distance between raisins. We're talking about a much deeper level of space, an infinite void into which matter is expanding because the property of matter is expansion. Understand? So as the universe expands and everything expands inside it as well, everything remains the same to you as you would see it. But outside, you can see that it is expanding. And how would we know that it's expanding? Because objects are red shifted. And the more red shifted they are, the more mass they have. And you tell it's draining. Well, back to our illustration. So as the universe as a whole expands and everything else within it expands, you can see what the pound replicate experiment was telling you. It's telling you that clock speed increases, wavelength increases, and the length of a meter increases. Although everything inside is constant, all the laws of physics remain the same. There is no difference to the local observer. The remote observer or the observer outside the universe can see these changes taking place, and you can see them taking place inside as well because. Objects that are away from you, on average, are red shifted. The distance between them is fixed because as they recede away, as the universe expands, the yardsticks expand along with them. So the distances you measure it remains fixed. But that red shift is not gravitational red shift or a change in energy as Einstein claims. It is relativity claims. It's a real Doppler shift. Light is not constrained, it's not mass, so it's not a ruler, it doesn't shrink or grow, it's telling you the truth, it's reporting the actual rate of recession or difference in rates of expansion between any two points in space. And since expansion is a property of matter, the greater a mass of an object, the greater it will be redshifted. If it's double the mass, it will be receding away at twice the rate. And so that's the cause of the redshift that we see, say, within the galaxy, between suns and quasars and moons and the actual redshift that we described in the pound replicate experiment of light moving away from the Earth. So this illustration may help a little bit. But before we go any further, it's time to, we're at the fork in the road, are we not? Is what I've been saying making sense to you? Because at this point, we should consider whether or not we want to take the blue pill or the red pill. That's your choice and not look back. If you want to keep your government job, and get paid for pretending to be smart like Einstein, walk away right now. If you wanna take the red pill and take the path, escape from the prison of learned ignorance and take the path of understanding, cosmic understanding and enlightenment, I will help you. Just pay close attention and Maybe go over it quite a few times and think about it, and eventually you'll begin to see that this is all a fact. I have not come up with any kind of hypothesis or theory. This is the truth. So here's an older illustration diagram that might 
help you understand. This is just, uh, we're using pool balls here to explain it. And you'll see that the five ball is the mass of five, the six ball is the mass of six, and the nine ball is the heaviest ball of all, the largest ball of all, we'll give it a mass of nine. And so you'll see that each of these is expanding away from the earth and at a different rate, because expansion is a property of mass, the larger mass expands much more rapidly. And so it's more shifted towards the red. The light is more shifted towards the red. And we can use the Doppler equations to actually calculate the rate of expansion, relative expansion, difference in rates of expansion between the earth and say this nine ball way out here. Truly we can, except that the physicists don't acknowledge that the cosmos is expanding in this fashion. But we just proved that it is. The pound red experiment proves that it is. So we have for a five ball, we still are pretty much in the blue. The six ball is a little heavier. So it's the wavelength is stretched out a little bit. Now it's more towards the green, although it looks the same if you're traveling along that path. And the nine ball is traveling much faster. So it's shifted way towards the red. But the yardsticks, the meter sticks, the way in which we would measure the distance between those objects gives us a fixed distance. You understand? They're not, they are receding away because of cosmic expansion, but you don't see that within the box because you're part of the box. Everything is part of the box. So these, the redshift that we see on average is due to cosmic expansion. It's not gravitational redshift that proves relativity. It's the expansion of cosmic space. This is a fact. The distance from the observer is always going to be fixed, even though in the cosmic sense, all these objects are receding away from each other. So we will go to uh, an animation where we Look at this effect. Of course, this animation isn't very good, is it? It, it isn't. Um, the balls are all the same size and they're not receding away from each other at different rates, which they really would be. So, but it might help to look at this animation and think about it. Okay, um, then here's another. This may be of some. You see that the external infinite void is a coordinate system. And we see that these objects, as the universe expands, they continue to expand. And so, even though these objects, celestial objects, appear fixed to us, but they're redshifted to a degree proportional to their mass, that the expansion continues indefinitely outside the universe. And this is important to understand. It's somewhat difficult, isn't it? Because we're not talking about space in the sense of distance between objects. We're talking about the internal space of objects themselves as they expand into this infinite void. And this is the fact that the pound replica experiment tells us. So the two ball, the five ball, the nine ball, they measure the same distance constantly. Well, what about the acceleration that causes gravity? Well, that's only, that's only a, an effect, it's very short range. As soon as you get very far away from an object or say the earth, then the effect of gravity is the acceleration, which gives you the force of gravity is almost zero. So the moon then is in orbit, it isn't falling. So right now we still have a case of uniform recession. The nine ball is receding the fastest, the five ball is intermediate and the two ball is receding the slowest and we can measure the rate of expansion and the rate of recession in the cosmic realm using the Doppler equations. The 
so in this next illustration, you see that the color of the light wave as it escapes Earth is not constant. We're not talking about uniform recession. Light is accelerating very rapidly away from the Earth and then it slows down. The rate of acceleration slows down as the force of gravity diminishes. And it just so happens, of course, as yardsticks increase away from the source of gravity and the clock speed increases and the wavelength increases, that this is exactly, well, let's look at it this way. The acceleration of light leaving the Earth is exactly the reverse of falling bodies. This means the expansion of the Earth is responsible for the opposite force of gravity. Objects fall at the same exact rate that light accelerates as it's leaving the Earth, and light that is leaving the Earth, that is the rate of the expansion of the Earth that we don't see because our meter sticks our dimensions inside are fixed. As often as I try to explain this, I somehow feel that I'm not getting through. Okay? So understand that. Well, think about it. Light accelerates as it's leaving the Earth. Well, nothing accelerates. Gravity pulls everything towards it, but not light. Okay, so what is that telling me? It's telling you that space is expanding as you leave the Earth. It tells you that the Earth is expanding. Live with it. You know, I'm not trying to pound it into your brain. I'm trying to get you to understand this. This is proof. This is what they found Repgate experiment and other experiments that show reduced clock speed close to zero are telling you. They're telling you that gravity is the, is the manifestation, the reverse manifestation, the opposite and equal force. According to Newton's third law that every action creates an equal and opposite reaction, the action of the expansion of space causes the reverse force of gravity. So in a sense, it isn't just that objects are falling towards the Earth, but on the cosmic level, if you're outside looking in, you see that the Earth is expanding and it's expanding at a faster rate than you are, and therefore it's catching up to you and colliding with you. It's just the opposite of what you experience. So both these things are true. But what's important for you to know is that internally in the universe, dimensions are fixed. There was no big bang. But we're going to get into that more as we move along here. But I just wanted to show you that the continual change in wavelength and the velocity of light as it leaves Earth is matching the, exactly matching the rate of falling bodies in the reverse direction, the cause of gravity. Can you believe it? Scientists have been trying to figure this out for hundreds of years. Newton was right on the verge of it. I think he uh, took too much mercury, got exposed to too much mercury in some of his experiments, or he would have saved us from Einstein and relativity and the Big Bang and all of that nonsense. So Earth is expanding at an accelerating rate proportional to its mass, and you also are expanding, but the difference, your rate of expansion compared to the Earth is so small, we don't, we don't think about that. And this is just, um, you know, we've seen this, these equations before and we know what they mean. So pause the video and stop and think about this if, if you need to. So here's another animation that might help you understand that. On the left, we have a viewpoint, a remote observer, real remote actually, this is what we would see if we were outside the universe and observing this effect of gravity. We would see, well, no, that's on the right, excuse me, on the right is outside, we see space is expanding and it's pushing light. It's squeezing the light as it expands in an accelerating fashion. And so the frequency is increasing, the wavelength is decreasing, 
and the force is pushing, causing the earth to expand and meet the little man. And from outside the universe, we see just the opposite effect, do we not? Okay, we see that, um, or excuse me, from inside the universe, we feel the equal and opposite force of gravity, so the man perceives himself as falling towards the earth. Okay, let's examine this animation very carefully. The right side of the animation is what we see and experience inside the box. Because this is the material universe, the physical universe, the physical level. And on that level, we see the falling man falling at an accelerating rate towards the Earth. This is the acceleration due to gravity that we understand very well, thanks to Isaac Newton. Potential energy equals mgh, and his velocity will increase <clears throat> in proportion to the gain in energy. We also see that as he approaches the Earth, the wavelength of light is sh shifting towards the blue. The frequency is increasing, the, the wavelength is decreasing, and this also is happening at an accelerating rate, if that isn't exactly apparent in the animation. So what is this telling us? It's telling us that as we leave the Earth, space is expanding, the length of a meter is expanding. Where is it expanding into? We don't see it, we don't experience it when we're traveling with it because our clock speed increases along with it. And the wavelength of light increases along with it. In fact, the increase in distance is actually equivalent to the increase in the wavelength of light. So what the pound Repka experiment tells us is that the light is expanding, we cannot see it because we're expanding with it. So as space is expanding, rulers are expanding, everything is expanding and well at a proportion, at a rate proportion to its mass, but this expansion is invisible. Objects that are expanding in this way appear to be fixed. We only know that they're expanding because of the shift in wavelength of light between us because light itself is traveling outside the box and it's giving us the information we need to that tells us exactly how fast things are expanding away from us. So if space is accelerating, expanding at an accelerating rate away from us, what, was it, what does it look like outside the box? And here outside the box, we see that the Earth is expanding, and as it expands, is pushing light. Light is being propagated by the expansion of matter into space, expansion of matter and space. And so, as it as it the Earth expands towards the man, towards the man, we see the same shift towards the blue in the frequency of light. But we have a different distance to look at from outside the universe. Outside the universe, things are expanding at a continual rate. Well, <clears throat> let's stop and consider the acceleration of this expansion at this point. That is a force. The, these are facts. The pound Repka experiment tells us that space is expanding at an accelerating rate away at the same exact and opposite rate of falling bodies. So outside the box, this is what is actually happening. Matter and space are expanding together. But according to Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the expansion of space at an accelerating rate is what produces the retrograde force of gravity within the box. This is fact. It's fact of experiment. It's consistent with the laws of Isaac Newton. This is how space expands, not in the way that the raisins are moving away from each other within the box, 
but in that the raisins and space and everything inside the box is expanding together. Now we have the moon out here and the moon is also expanding. It's not shifting very much. It's going from blue to green and the distance that we would measure between the earth and the moon is actually fixed, even though the moon is expanding away from us. Both the moon and the earth are expanding at different rates proportional to their mass. And that's what gives us the blue shift. The blue shift or the red shift, the shift towards the red into the green is telling us the rate at which the earth and the moon are receding away from each other. But we don't see that because inside the box, everything is expanding proportionally and the distances are fixed. That's an interesting concept, isn't it? Well, it isn't just a concept, it's proof. We have the proof in the Pound Repka and many other experiments that tell us this is what is happening. Forget about Albert Einstein. This isn't my idea. This is what the experiments are telling us. These are the facts of physics. And this is what you need to know, what you need to understand what the world needs to understand because there was no there is no big bang the universe is not expanding in the sense that the distances between the raisins are expanding well wait a minute now the one what is it that these cosmologists what is it that these physicists are measuring this progressive redshift between galaxies well let's stop and think about this for just a minute universe as a whole is just like the earth it has a mass and it's expanding at the speed of light It's propagating light so that is the baseline speed of light and as it expands it also for over a short distance expands at an accelerating rate so it's just like any other massive object the universe as a whole is expanding at an accelerating rate but again this accelerating rate of expansion, we would see it in the, in the Doppler shift between here and the moon, we would see this increasing minute by minute shift in, in frequency of light if the force of gravity extended very far away from the earth, but it doesn't. It essentially before Long before it gets to the moon, the force of gravity diminishes, the rate of expansion diminishes to the point where there is no force of gravity. So these objects appear to be fixed. They don't fall towards the earth any, any longer. For all practical purposes, they are fixed in relation to the earth and there is no gravitational effect and there is no progressive minute by minute, second by second increase in frequency. However, you understand how gravity works. It's a curve. It never diminishes entirely. There's always a tiny, tiny fraction because it's what you call, it's asymptotic with the, with the x-axis. So the force of gravity diminishes, but it never entirely disappears. You could argue that point because I mean, it's so vanishingly small within the solar system and even within the galaxy that we don't see it. We see consistent red shifts between objects of mass that appear to be fixed. And we call this, or Einstein call this gravitational red shift. We know better. We know that outside the box that these objects and mass in the entire universe is expanding at an accelerating rate. However, that tiny, tiny fraction of acceleration as it accumulates Okay, what's happening? What's happening outside the box? The velocity of light is accumulating at the incremental rate of the value of C inside the box. So it's expanding at that rate. It's expanding as an accelerating rate, which is diminishing so that we don't see that progressive incremental increase over over the distance of oh, very long distances, over the distance of anything within the galaxy or in neighboring galaxies. But as you get farther and farther away, that increase, progressive increase in the value of big C, the overall enormous rate of expansion of the universe as a whole, which is meaningless to us. And it doesn't affect the laws of physics at all, but 
it will begin to accumulate and we will begin to see a progressive race shift on the intergalactic level. And this is just a tiny, tiny fraction of the overall rate of expansion of the cosmos as a whole, the external rate of expansion. It's enormous and growing at the rate of little c every second. But that accumulates with distance. And this is what the physicists, this is what the cosmologists are measuring. You can be sure of it. So what they've done is that they've used this, teamed up with Hubble, and they've come up with these standard candles and measures of distance. And they said, yeah, well, this redshift is increasing with distance. And so therefore, the raisins are, the distance between the raisins is expanding. So the universe is expanding. Not realizing that, that unlike the redshift within the galaxy for other celestial bodies, when you get that far away, you begin to see the accumulated progressive additional redshift due to the accelerating expansion of the universe as a whole. And I hope I'm explaining this well enough because that's what they're measuring. And what it means is that the universe as we measured, as we see it is not expanding, it's only expanding into this infinite void outside the box that we can't see. And that's what the physicists are saying. There is no such thing as gravitational redshift. And the progressive red, intergalactic redshift is not an indication that the distance between the raisins are expanding or that you can interpolate this backwards to a big bang. It just isn't so. Am I, are you, am I getting through? These are facts. This all comes out of the pound Repka and other experiments which tell us that space is expanding and it's expanding at an accelerating rate. That's all we need to know. There could not possibly have been a big bang and there's more, there's Newton's G, which tells us, well, at this point, let's um, move on to a summary, a one page summary of everything that we know so far and just stop and ask yourself at this point, have I got through to you? Are you understanding? So we can summarize the cosmic expansion model on just one page, just by putting in a nutshell all of the facts that we learned from experiments like pound Repka and the known laws of physics. Nothing here is my own invention. We just put the facts together in a way that they make sense. And in order to do that, we're gonna to have to abandon all notions about Albert Einstein and his theory of relativity, because this isn't a theory, these are the facts that we need to be concerned about. And the most important thing that comes of it, and the thing that we can conclude very soon, is that the force of gravity is the result, the opposite and equal result of the expansion of space, the force of the expansion of space, According to Newton's third law, then every action, that's the expansion of space into an infinite void, has an equal and opposite effect called gravity. We perceive of it as gravity in our dimension, our physical dimension. <clears throat> we also know that the potential energy is the result of a differential rate of expansion between any two points wherever the force of gravity is evident at least. Otherwise, it just simply represents the uniform rates of expansion between two points or two celestial bodies in space. But wherever gravity is affecting us, we know that the potential energy is a change in velocity, is the result of the change in velocity between two 
any two elevations. So any change in velocity, whether due to gravity or not, will produce <clears throat> an expansion or a contraction of space and time. So we've concluded that, and we understand that as space expands away from a body of mass like the Earth, that it has an increase in wavelength that's equal to an increase in the distance of a meter, and that the clock speed, which the definition of meter depends on, will increase as well. So those three things, increase or decrease, whether you're going up or down in a gravitational field. And the two points where we're concerned about can be considered the different rates of expansion on the cosmic level that we don't see because they appear to be fixed to us. <clears throat> and so we know that there could not have been a big bang because the universe expands internally into an infinite void where everything measures the same inside. We'll always get the fixed value for the radius of the universe as we would measure it. And that depends on, well, on Newton's gravitational constant, doesn't it? Because the gravitational constant tells us that the mass of the Earth, it tells us that there is a mass, a fixed mass of the Earth, and that the Earth, the fixed mass of the universe, and a fixed size to the universe. So, <clears throat> Newton's gravitational constant is equal to g, which is equal to the radius of the universe squared divided by the mass of the universe times the acceleration of light. And the acceleration of light is little c, our measurement of speed of light, the baseline speed of light, the equal to the rate of expansion of the universe as a whole. g is equal to that not just to the speed of light, but to the acceleration of light because it's the acceleration of light that gives us the force of gravity. Excuse me, the acceleration of matter, which is equal to the velocity of light because the expansion of matter is what's propagating light. And so you end up with the speed of light exactly equal to the rate of expansion of the universe as a whole. So that's what Newton's G is telling us. You know, why are why aren't they telling why are they just telling us it's a fudge factor? You know, it means more than that. And it meant more of that to Newton. You can guarantee it. So those are the three immutable constants of the universe: its radius, its mass, and the acceleration of light. And of course, the speed of light is going to be proportional to the experience rate of expansion of mass. So light is propagated, it's not transmitted by anything. And that's what explains the Michelson-Morley experiment, that the speed of light is equal in all directions because it's being propagated in all directions at the same time, at every point in space. But of course, it's being propagated at a rate proportional to the mass density in that region. And the mass density of the universe is not uniform, obviously. There are black holes all over the place and empty space and this and that and the other. So as light is traveling, it's not actually traveling, it's getting pushed, isn't it? It's getting pushed by the rate of expansion of space, space and matter. So it's being propagated. And wherever the mass density is greater, the velocity of light will be greater. And if you're thinking about coming back, coming backwards and approaching like a black hole, the force of expansion outward is going to push light away or slow it down. Right? So these are things they don't talk about to you <clears throat> very much because either nobody understands it or somebody's hiding the truth. So I've explained the truth to you. You understand the truth. You can understand it. I haven't lied. These are just the facts. So I shouldn't have to defend myself. If you're a good enough mathematician and, and scientist to be able to follow this, you know I'm right. And no, the raisins couldn't be expanding, you know, in the sense that our internal distance is, is increased between them. 
Newton's G tells us that. Look what happens if we try to um, change G like he did. Well, he must have known this. What a fate, what a liar. G is equal to radius squared. So if the universe is expanding, it's going to have to be less dense. And so the radius is going to have to increase. But if it increases, G increases, and the force of gravity increases as a result. It just doesn't work. It's backwards. He must have known that. You can see that. So G is G represents the volume of the universe or the mass density, let's say, of the universe. The radius of the universe divided by the mass, the radius squared divided by the mass, okay, times the acceleration of light. And that's all we need to know about the universe. That tells us everything we need to know. There was no big bang, baby. So what else can you say? You know, I should let you go to bed. And so that's what I'm going to do. Have a nice one.